Stay right here, Christina. We're going to take a deeper dive on the chip stocks, the role of AI, and to share some names he's watching, let's bring in Matt Bryson of Wedbush Securities. Matt, welcome. Good to have you with us. Give us three names uh, in the chip world that aren't NVIDIA that you like. So I, I certainly like AMD, uh, which Christina brought up. Um, I, I think they've set themselves up as the second source to NVIDIA. AMD, um, AMD. Okay. AMD. Exactly. Um, and because they're just working off a lower revenue base, um, it's easier for them to grow off of that base. Um, I like uh, Taiwan Semi there. Um, they are the supplier to all of the leading uh, chip makers for AI. So whether you're talking uh, Avago um, or Marvell or AMD or NVIDIA, um, that, that chip is getting fabbed uh, by TSM. Um, and, and then lastly, uh, I, I like Micron. Um, one of the concerns around memory right now um, is there's too much high bandwidth memory or there will be too much high bandwidth memory. Um, that's the, the memory that's used in conjunction with uh, the NVIDIA GPUs or AMD's GPUs. Um, and if we're going to see this continued demand for AI, um, what you're actually seeing is more and more memory uh, get stacked on the boards. Um, so HBM should only grow faster um, than AI shipments, in my view. Yeah, TSMC you brought up is a great point, too, especially as we talk about the competition from cloud players. They're going to be creating their own in-house chips. A lot of them do still have to use TSMC to actually build it. So TSMC can benefit not only from the AI GPUs, but the advanced packaging and then eventually the in-house chips and as well all of the smartphone chips from Apple. So there's a huge, uh, I guess, vast array of sources of revenue. But you didn't mention Intel. AMD has its new chip coming out, and then you have Gaudi uh, with Intel. Why is that? Uh, I, I think the, the, the difference between AMD and Intel is a AMD has traction, I believe, at, at three of the large U.S. hyperscalers. Um, if you look at spend um, on uh, accelerators, it's really been Microsoft, Amazon, Google, uh, Meta leading uh, the way, and AMD has traction at, at a number of those. With, with Intel, um, I, I think their hope is, is to um, get into the inference market. So after we're done training the models and applications start to show up, um, that they, they'll get some traction at, at enterprises. Um, but I, I think that's a very much a to-be-determined thing, whereas with AMD, um, I, I think they've got design wins. And uh, clearly, if you listen to Lisa Sue, they already ran things. Matt, do you think NVIDIA is overbought? I think that AI is going to be a game-changing uh, trend. Um, if I have concerns, at some point, whenever you've got shortages of chips like we have right now, uh, eventually you sell through backlog and you see a bit of a pause in revenue. Uh, but no, I, I think AI in the data center over time is going to continue to grow. Um, historically, these markets have had one or two dominant players. Um, and NVIDIA has 80% market share. So they've established themselves. They've got a moat with CUDA. Um, could there be a disappointment at some point? I don't think it's coming this quarter. I don't think it's coming next quarter. Um, so, no, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's overbought. All right. Up, up uh, a triple over the past year. Matt Bryson, thank you. Christina Parsonevelis, thank you. Thanks. Good to have you here.